Yeah, whatever. <coughs> All right. So hi everyone. So I'm Luca Franceschini, and I'm developer relation engineer at Phylabs, which is core contributor to the Archway protocol. So today I'm gonna speak about Archway. So what is Archway? Well, Archway is positioning itself to be the value capture chain, where basically developers would find most attractive to build uh, their own decentralized applications. And the reason for this is that it has the value capture engine that basically it's a mechanism that allows developers to get rewards proportionally to the usage of their smart contracts. So the more your smart contract grinds transactions, the more rewards you would get. So based on the usage of your smart contract, then developers get their fair cut, basically. So before we get into understanding how does it work, then it's nice to get a step back and like kind of realizing that uh, until now there hasn't really been an easy way to monetize smart contracts, right? Because even if you pour blood and sweat and you create a, a wonderful decentralized application that everybody uses, at the end of the day, most of the value gets captured on the protocol level, on the infrastructure layer. So you can think, for example, popular dApps on Ethereum, like Uniswap or whatever, that even if you have a lot of transactions, then at the end of the day, validators get most of the value. And this is aligned with the FAT protocol thesis that actually suggests that uh, most of the value gets captured from the underlying protocol rather than the application itself. And uh, of course, this is really not nice for developers who put a lot of work into it. And uh, in general, it's also a bit discrepant with what we always seen in Web2, right? Because uh, most of you, I guess, you came to Prague, you got your Airbnb. At the end of the day, like Airbnb is the app that captures the value, you know? Like it's not the HTTPS protocol or the TCP IP. So, like even in web two, like it, it makes sense that like uh, it's, it's the application itself that captures the value. So that's where Archway fits. So uh, it's, it feels we are kind of in an inflection point because now there are a lot of layer ones. So it's becoming really crucial for developers to understand where to deploy their DAP. And uh, yeah, I'm here telling why Archway is the best uh, choice. So. In general, Archway is a different breed of layer one in the sense that, uh, by the way, it uses, of course, the Cosmos SDK, and it's a layer one blockchain. And uh, it's optimized to allow developers to capture the value, basically with uh, its uh, value capture engine. And uh, it's basically relying on its flexible economic model and uh, that also uh, is secure enough to prevent spam and uh, malicious attacks basically through the minimum gas price that it's enforced on a uh, gas unit level so you actually make sure that also like you don't have the network spam with a lot of transactions that are, are trying just to get rewards so there is an economically sound model behind it so uh, Archway's value proposition is to be a very cozy layer one for developers to deploy their Cosmos and applications and just get new revenue streams instead of launching a token even if you don't have the need for it. That at the end of the day, this is what we saw so far. Like a lot of folks that maybe created very cool smart contracts that gets used a lot, then they didn't have any way to monetize their work, right? So they needed to either launch a token with dubious utility or maybe get to other round of foundings or whatever predatory monetization strategy. So with Archway, you don't need to do this. You just, you know, get your rewards and, and, and that's fine. So let's see how it works. So the value capture engine is divided into three main pillars. So the first one is the gas rebates. So basically uh, when your smart contract consumes gas, so it's processing transaction and it's doing uh, its execution. So 50% of the uh, gas fees gets burned and 50% goes to the smart contract itself. And then you are able as a developer to direct that value into your community, into specific use case, whatever you want. So that's the first uh, pillar, let's say, of the 
uh, value capture engine. Then there is the inflationary rewards, so you would get, as a developer, 25% of the inflation, while the 75% would get to validators, like normal proof of stake uh, vibe. And, and then another thing interesting is this customizable uh, layer fee, that is the basically smart contract premium. So you are able to set a flat fee on, on the contract execution, uh, which basically resembles a lot of the traditional licensing model, right? Like you, for example, have a service that's maybe using some logic from another service, and, and that service is just monetized no, on, on a uh, pay-for-use, uh, whatever mechanism. So this is cool stuff because it, it gives you enough flexibility to, depending on your use case, to actually uh, redirect the value yeah, however you want. And... Uh, you can also set this premium to zero if you want to and just get the inflationary rewards and gas rebates. So it's, it's up to the developer. And uh, the way that this works is through two different modules uh, that are actually created. So there is the tracking module that tracks all the gas usage that's happening around the network. And, uh, and, and basically, yeah, it's, it tracks the gas consumption because this data is then used by the rewards module to basically distribute rewards. So uh, the way that it works is that you as a developer, like while you are uh, instantiating the contract, you basically uh, set up in the metadata an owner address and a rewards receiver address. And uh, while the owner address can set, change the contract metadata, then the rewards address uh, just receive rewards. And uh, these are batch 32 addresses, which means that they can be normal addresses, they can be another smart contract, they can be a multi-sig, you name it. So uh, basically these are the two modules that make the magic happen and, uh, and, they, and they work together. And uh, that's how we refer to the value capture engine, is these two modules closely working together to monitor gas consumptions and distribute rewards. So, uh, Archway is, of course, powered by Cosmosm, so you can de develop a contract in Rust, uh, you, yeah, you compile it to a uh, Wasm binary, and you can use IBC. So the question here is not why should you build on Archway, it's why not, right? Because then if you have IBC enabled, then what's, what's the reason of deploying a contract to another chain while you can deploy it on Archway and get a big DIN uh, economic model for rewards that is uh, like giving you value proportionally on the success of your DAP. Like it's, and then you're already interconnected with whatever IBC channel you want. So right now with, uh, we have some of them already. Then after minutes, there's gonna be way, way, way more. So like here it's a bit, you know, changing the paradigm and getting the developers back into the center because like it's, at the end it's developers that create value, no? because they create applications that they get used by everybody else, and uh, it's, it's good if they can rely on solid economic models and, and just, you know, not to launch whatever token or, or just ask every time for funding just because they can't monetize smart contracts. So that's where Archway fits in the equation. And uh, this, uh, as you can imagine, like, uh, enables a lot of different economic uh, uh, models and business models basically because yeah you can redirect uh, the value wherever you want so you could for example subsidize gas fees uh, so like allowing for a, a frictionless interaction with uh, yeah web web three products you could also uh, reduce the dex fees or for example bootstrap liquidity mining program in in a yeah more uh, more efficient way. So you could also uh, incentivize governance participation or anything else, like really sky is the limit here. You can, uh, yeah, if, you, if you think that uh, there is a value in holding an NFT for a long time, you can uh, you know, set your smart contract in a hey, like rewards this guy or stuff like this because at the end of the day, you as a developer, you set the rewards receiver address and that can be a smart contract so you can distribute the rewards however you want. And this is really powerful. So, yeah, and uh, in general, there are a lot of folks excited for this, of course, and because, like, what Archie is really striving to do is just to be the way to go for developers to build and deploy Cosmosm 
applications. I'm making sure that they are solid enough and sustainable in the long term and just the, that they don't get, you know, vampired from, from uh, like the lack of monetization for smart contracts. So this is um, where R3 fits and that's the reason of the value capture chain. Um, so R3 is gonna go mainnet in July. So yeah, hold your horses, just almost there. And uh, so this is a perfect time to go in the website, check the docs, and uh, see how to, you know, how this whole mechanism works, how to run a node, if, and everything else. Like, like there is a lot of documentation, and there is also a lot of excitement around the upcoming mainnet. So we really expect a lot of folks to deploy uh, dApps and, uh, and get their, their value, right? So it's, uh, we are really excited and yeah, it's, uh, it's really a nice moment. So uh, there is an emerging ecosystem that is rapidly growing. So there are already several dApps that are uh, building on Archery and also like uh, there is a lot of partners and um, uh, infrastructure providers, uh, services, uh, there is hardcore crew of early supporters and validators and relayers. So it's, it's, there is a lot of support from the Cosmos ecosystem and all around. And in general, when it comes to the dApps, there is a lot of stuff going on, both on DeFi, NFTs, uh, you name it. So uh, currently, like, um, there are some dApps already on testnet, but there are way, way, way more that are coming just on main at launch. So uh, really, like, it's just, look around what they're doing because some of them are really like creating interesting uh, use cases out of this very unique model that Archway provides. So uh, there is really a lot to look at and uh, yeah, that's perfect time to do it before mainnet to see what's cooking. So <coughs> in general, you as a developer would uh, yeah, be able to uh, leverage the, the tooling that Archway provides. Of course, the Archway D, like the, the core daemon, but also like the developer CLI, which is thought to be a streamlined way to deploy your smart contracts and also interact with the modules of Archway. So the rewards module, the gas tracking module. So it's, uh, and there is a lot of uh, also work that is getting done in even revamp it. So just to take the full developer experience, like very, uh, make it very smooth. So there is the Arch3.js, which is basically a wrapper of the Cosmos.js, but it gives you also the ability to interact with JavaScript, uh, with the yeah, modules that Arch provides. So uh, yeah, if you are, are JavaScript dev, then yeah, I mean, it's, you can use the Arch3.js to, to create some dApps on it. Um, and then there is also the Arch3 Connect. So the Arch3 Connect uh, is not necessarily just for developers, it's more of for everybody to um, easily interact with the whole Archway ecosystem. So it's, uh, it's about to be released and it's a clean, fresh, intuitive UI that allows you to interact with dApps and uh, stake, interact with governance and all these kind of things. So it's about to, to be released. So just, you know, stay tuned in Discord and, and, and see what's up because there is a lot of things that, are get, that is getting flushed out. So, also, by the way, if you are looking to learn more about Cosmosm uh, and how to develop dApps, then there is also Area 52, which is yeah, a wonderful uh, two courses regarding Cosmosm uh, development. So that's, that's really, really, really a good way to get into the Cosmos smart contract ecosystem. So yeah, just check it out. And uh, there is a lot of information available really a lot, so uh, yeah, it's start now, maybe, let's look into stuff. <laughs> so yeah, if you go in the website, there is the white paper section, so uh, where you can find not only the white paper, <coughs> where it's, of course, give you an overview of what this is all about, but also you can see the technical paper that goes uh, really into the nitty gritty on how, not only how the modules works, but also like it gives you, in general, a sense on, the, on how the, Cosmos stack works. So even if you are maybe not 100% knowledgeable about uh, the Cosmos SDK and stuff like this, then the technical white paper is a wonderful way to start and, and look into, into things. So uh, also there is the economic paper that's where 
yeah, that's all where the sophistication happens from an economic level. So there you can see the formulas, you can see all, all the consideration that has been taken um, to, to release this model. And, uh, and it's quite exciting because this is the first time that a structured fee marketplace comes into the Cosmos ecosystem. So yes, that's cool. And um, so yeah, there is a lot of things uh, to look at and everything is available. So just you can go in, in the website and, and check. What, um, what's up. So and then at the end of the day, it's just about start building, right? Because like uh, Archery really wants to put developers in the position of just focusing on building technology, not worrying about how to monetize it, not worrying about revenue streams, not worry about anything else. Just focus on building cool decentralized applications. So that's, uh, that's why Archery is, is aiming to be the, yeah, the way to go blockchain for uh, creators and builders and uh, and uh, and is 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 working on the blossoming of this whole solid smart contract infrastructure because at the end of the day if you are a developer you can think not only about adding revenue streams uh, to your decentralized application but also like if you focus on tooling for example you can imagine a specific toolkit that gets used by a lot of folks this is gonna grind a lot of transactions and that's a lot of reward. So it's, it's really, really interesting to see like what's, what's up. So just try it out uh, uh, for any question, information, like in general, you can find us on Discord uh, and uh, there is a wonderful community there. You can check the GitHub code, of course, uh, follow the medium for articles and explanation, Twitter, and uh, yeah, in general, just start building, so yeah. Thanks, everyone. So, any questions? I do have a question. Um, I noticed that you, you mentioned that IPC is important for, um, for Archway. Um, I also think that you know, the, the reward module is like open source, and you know, people have the details on, on how to use it. Um, and I can see that. You know, That's a, that's a very good question. So I think uh, when it comes to this, like it's, it's gonna happen in any case. So uh, other chains will, will, will use similar model. Like there is no way, because people are starting now to realize, hey, there's no way I can monetize my smart contract. So why I'm putting all this money here if I cannot? So it's, it's inevitable. So I think to answer your question, like uh, uh, the way that Archery is, is positioned is that like it's, it's basically leading uh, this whole new layer one uh, uh, breed, let's say. So it's, when it comes to how to keep the competitive advantage, like there is a, a lot of work that is getting done on all the tooling and making sure that the ecosystem is, is very solid for developers to just chill into Archway. And, uh, and like there is a lot of also advantage that has been taken just working on these two modules and uh, a lot of work that is getting done on expanding them. So like uh, I think like in a lot of things, like still the first mover advantage, it's, it's an advantage. Uh, if you, of course, keep it as an advantage and you d d just don't lose time. But uh, yeah, as I say, a lot of things are getting flushed out. So it's already a wonderful ecosystem. So yeah, like we, we really think that developers will see for the foreseeable future our, the way to go for, for deploying dApps on Archery. Yeah, but thanks for the question. Is there, a, is there an, an off-ramp for, for the Archway token? So if I get the reward, uh, is there a DEX on Archway or is it listed on, on other DEXs? So the, there's, gonna, there's gonna be a DEX, uh, I, I think more than one, but like the, the, there's gonna be Astro Vault uh, released in uh, Mainnet, which is actually very smart DEX. Like it's, it's, it's whole model, it's really, really interesting. So uh, I'm not gonna get into the details now because it's, it's quite complex and uh, I, I really suggest you to check it out because it's, uh, it, it has a lot of nuances, but it, you can see it's, it's, it really takes advantage of, of the engine, the value capture engine that Archway provides. So it's, I, I can definitely see a lot of uh, users like just 
you know, enjoying the decks and, and, uh, and maybe at first not even knowing that it's powered by Arch and that's how it works. So yeah, that's, that's, that's coming also. So thanks. Yeah, so uh, for example, like there, there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, use cases uh, for, for projects that uh, find, depending on their project, a way to involve their community. So basically it's like, hey, like if you do some specific interaction with, with the product or if you, you know, uh, get this NFT, do this kind of thing, then you, you get rewards and this kind of thing. So, uh, the Astrovault, it's, it's an amazing example, like the, the DEX itself. So there is also um, like several stuff regarding contributions because it really makes it easier for not only developers but other folks like to contribute to common resources and gets rewarded for that. So because you can, you know, redirect the value of uh, like, let's say, uh, your product is getting built and, and it's, it's really easy to reward contributors, like just because it's, it, it, rewards are getting accrued. So, and, and to be honest, uh, uh, I, I'd like to see a lot of tooling getting built because uh, like if, if, if some teams get to the level of the developing a, a good standard for whatever thing, then uh, it's easier to conglomerate around a standard rather than just creating a different standard. Of course, like there can be fragmentation, like everybody can create its own similar thing, but that, that's, you know, that's, yeah, that's a bit of friction. So that's, that for me would be the, 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 the golden use case now, because then you get some tooling out and then everybody wants to use the tooling because it's, it's, the, it's the most solid, it's the most lightweight or whatever. And then just because you create the tooling then, and you're supporting and stuff like this, then, then you get direct you know uh, revenue from the usage of it so that's that for me it's it's mind blowing in a sense because we we are not used to see it in in, in web3 yeah so that's that's quite a cool one i was yeah for example for example uh, for example and and uh, and it's it depends on a lot of things but uh, like for sure i can definitely see specific niches for for packages that that would benefit a lot and would be able to improve their product even more. Of course, it doesn't apply to every product, right? But you know, like there, there, there is a lot of room to play with. That's, that's the cool thing. Like it's not just, yeah, you get inflationary rewards or gas rebates. Like you can also set the flat fees. So it's, uh, it's really a lot in experimentation phase, like in the sense that sky is the limit here. So I think like we, we still don't see all the potential that can be accomplished. And we are just at the beginning, but it's normal. We are not even in mainnet, so, and, uh, but it's coming soon. So. That's, that's, that's definitely a good, a, a good start. Like, uh, that's definitely a good start. And uh, uh, so, but also like, for example, if some products um, gets way more re reliable and they develop, because right now a lot of people, you know, they, they, Maybe they create a project, then they, they, they get some funding, then they, they ditch it or whatever, they go to another thing and stuff like this. Well, this can really help uh, developers to sustain uh, or, uh, their operations somehow no? with different revenue streams. So like supporting developers, it's also you know, a um, virtuous cycle in the way that the more developers are support, the more they are incentivized to build, uh, the more, and then you, take out a lot of dead leaves that we always saw in, in, the, in the Web3 ecosystem. So, uh, but yeah, like we are, we are targeting mostly developers, but just because like we see the value in developers being <sighs> chill and, and creating cool stuff and just focus on the tech. And then all the rest just is a, a consequence of it, let's say. So yeah. Okay, so, 
Yeah. No, in, in, in this case, uh, uh, when it comes to the inflationary rewards, it's, it's just 25% to the, to the up builder. So uh, the, the, the rationale behind this is that, like, in general, in a proof of stake network and de depending, like, especially maybe the Cosmos SDK, like, you really don't, of course, you, you have operations to sustain economically wise, but it's not like you are mining or there is really a huge amount of computational power that gets into it. So the idea here is that, hey, like, what if instead of giving all the cake uh, to validators, what if we give 25% of inflation also to developers? And uh, in general, like when it comes to the gas rebates, like we don't see in Cosmos like a lot of transaction volumes all across the Cosmos ecosystem. So it's, it's like, uh, okay, let's, let's see if this really makes way more usages because developers can build way more cooler DAFs. And, and the smart contract premium is just, you can think it as a customizable fee layer because it's, it's something that the, the user or the smart contract pays for the contract ex execution. So it doesn't come neither from inflation, neither from rewards. So it's basically direct uh, cost for, for the user. So which resembles a bit this, this licensing model, no? That, uh, yeah, you have a service, hey, okay, uh, I build my own API or whatever. Okay, you wanna use it? Yeah, okay, uh, you, you pay this then. Then, then it's very predictable because it's, it's a flat fee. So even you as a developer, like you can really make some numbers, you know, like you can understand, hey, okay, I'm spending this for my infrastructure, but then I sh should maybe charge this in a premium. And, and then you can see like depending on, you know, how, the, how much the, um, the transaction fees are on the network, gas price, inflation, then you, 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 the, the owner of the contract can set the contract metadata. So you can also change the owner. Also, the owner can be a smart contract. So you can also, you know, like kind of get a DAO that should say, like, should we put the flat fee, uh, you know, the, 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 the premium, should we not do it? And you can, I don't know, incentivize participation also. Yeah. Is the, is the premium on, on every use of the smart contract, or can you set it to just be like the first use, for example? You, you, can, you can actually tailor it for uh, specific executions. So. Even here, like there is a lot that can be that can be done because you can you can just depending on how it's used that you can you can set. Uh, so can you mimic like uh, like an app store app where you pay five bucks for the first use and then it's free forever after that? Yeah, why not? Okay, cool. Why not? Ah, sorry, sir. All good. Any other question? I would yeah. Uh, so when it, when it comes to tooling, like there is uh, uh, to de to deploy uh, smart contracts, for example, like it's uh, the um, the developer CLI makes it makes it easier for sure because it's uh, the, the interesting thing is that because of this whole uh, different way of of managing gas, then you always need to ask for what's the gas price and like the, there is. It's a bit sophisticated, the gas. so it's, it's not, if maybe you are not using the developer CLI, you are using the r then uh, of course you need to, just in the, in the query, you, you query the latest gas price or stuff like this, but it's, uh, the developer CLI just performs a lot of logic for, for yourself when it comes to this. So, and the more it gets expanded, then, 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 then uh, the more streamlined the, the, the thing is. So I would say, if you are a developer, just look into the um, developer CLI, but uh, also, yeah. Arch, Arch 3JS is a way to go, and like uh, Arch 3D also always works. So, um, yeah, and when it comes to uh, instead of learning how to create smart contracts, then Area 52 is, is the thing. It's wonderful courses, I highly recommend it. So, yeah, thank you. So, you think that Arch variables can target or is targeting more of the other dimensional apps? Uh, So uh, that's a good question, like because there is uh, 
there is a lot of things uh, to, to do. So I'd say, I'd say the plan here is to be the way to go chain for Cosmosome developers to build the labs. And then once you know, this is well established, then it's, it's getting to other ecosystem like you know, Ethereum. And Yeah. So it seems like a like a space is well I'm just I'm just curious what, what's gonna be the outcome of this because uh, yeah. how many developers is actually developing We are curious too. To be honest, we are curious too. And and that's that's the reason uh, of the existence of Arch is is this extreme abundance of layer ones that basically doesn't don't even allow you to monetize your dApps. And and that's the whole proposition. So it's like, hey, <laughs> hello? <laughs> Why, why are you struggling to deploy on that and, and just counting the cents or whatever if you have a baked in uh, economic model that rewards developers proportionally to the usage of their smart contract? It's a no-brainer, you know? Like, uh, so it's, uh, we are we're completely focusing now on, on Cosmosome dApps, but uh, it's, it's definitely a model that, that can be expanded across different ecosystems. So it's, uh, yeah, like we're, we're gonna definitely also iterate on it, and, uh, but it's, it's quite exciting, I have to say. Any more questions? All right, so yeah, I hope some of you will start build some dApps on Archway. And uh, yeah, thank you for your, for your time, everyone. <laughs>